TSPN TV, ATCA, Amador Tuolumne Community Action Agency, and Friday Night Live present TZL, Teen Zone Live. This program is made possible by Friday Night Live and ATCA. The Amador Tuolumne Community Action Agency are pleased to bring you TZL. This program is proudly brought to you by the youth of Amador County. With special thanks to Jackson Rancheria Park and Field Restoration Project. Please get involved. Our children need and deserve it. And Roundtable Pizza, the last honest pizza. And now, TZL, Teen Zone Live. Hello and welcome to Teen Zone Live. A show for teens by teens. I'm Danny Weinroff. I'm Hattie Hutchings. First off tonight, we would like to thank our sponsor, Roundtable, the last honest pizza. Very good. Delicioso. <laughs> um, Friday Night Live is part of ADCA. It is a youth program for junior high, elementary, and high school students. If you would like more information, you can contact Megan Taylor at 209-223-1485, extension 255. Teens Alive and Friday Night Live is a show about discussing teen-related topics and issues. Have you guys heard of the pledge about no texting and driving? I think everyone should take it because a lot of drivers get distracted when they're texting or eating or talking on the phone and it can cause a lot of accidents. I definitely think it's very important to spread the message about no texting while driving, especially since it's illegal in California. Very illegal. So we have a very lovely show for you guys tonight. Uh, first off, after this intro, of course, we will be having our uh, hosts, Zach and Emily, with local news and other such Inspiring topics. Inspiring stories. And then we have two lovely hosts, Alexis and Emily. They will be talking about safe driving for teens. Then next on the news set, we will have Zach and Hattie. And they will be interviewing Ann Litz about teen safety while driving. And she is from the State Farm Insurance Company. And then we have segment four. We have Danny interviewing Argonaut High School's drama co-president, Zach Kirkham. And then we will move on to the entertainment segment with Johnny and Jacob. They'll be discussing things such as look, newer movies, video games, things like that. And then we'll go back to me and Zach, and we are going to be talking about the Youth Traffic Safety Summit that some of the students have gone on. It is a conference about, you know, how to be safe while driving, and I heard they had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And then for the last segment, me and Emily will be performing a cooking segment where we will show you how we will, where we will, excuse me, where we will talk about a very healthy dish, oatmeal, all the different kinds and different toppings you can put on it. To me, oatmeal is not the best food. Really? I don't really like it. I think it's delicious. I have it oh. all the time. Really? Mm -hmm. So you're saying you could live off of oatmeal? Yes, I could. It is so healthy for you and so delicious and so easy to prepare. And with so many different toppings you can put on, like bananas, blueberries, brown sugar. It's just amazing, I really. I prefer other foods. What kind of foods would that be? Macaroni and cheese. <laughs> We're talking about healthy foods, Hattie. So? I prefer smoothies, though. Smoothies are really good. Smoothies are very delicious, I must say. Though they it are. depends on the kind of smoothie. So, with back to safe teen driving, so, Danny, what are your thoughts on teens being safe while driving? I think it is ridiculously important for teens to be safe while driving because they have so little experience behind the wheel they will not be as good as drivers as, let's say, their parents or other people they know who may have, uh, who may be doing some of the things that they think are okay while driving, like eating, doing makeup, things like that. Danny, do you think you should eat while you're driving? Definitely not, because I think it's hard to focus on driving while eating a hamburger. What if they're eating a hot dog? Eh, same difference. What do you think about kids not paying attention? while they're driving. That's just as bad as any person not paying attention while driving. If you don't pay attention, you'll swerve off in other lanes, maybe go off the side of the road. You know, it's very dangerous. 
Do you think that kids, when they're driving, do you think that it would be okay if they get their parents, if their parents call them, do you think that they should answer the phone or not answer the phone? I don't think a teenager should touch his phone whatsoever while they are in a moving car, unless so, they're a passenger. Do you think that is a good idea that, say, if they have a passenger in the car, they give the phone to the passenger? Or do you think that they should just have the phone be left alone for they're not distracted while their friend is on the phone? I think it would be better if it was important to give to their friend. It's much safer than answering the phone yourself. True. It seems that we are on short time and... Uh, we would like to go over to our host, Zach and Emily. In just a few seconds, I believe. I know. So, it's just... Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Emily. And in this segment, we're going to be doing a little bit of news for you guys. Tell us, tell you guys what's going on and all that great stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know what today is, right? Today is September... September 19th. September 19th. You want to know why this is one of my favorite days of the year? Why is that? Because in 1928, Steamboat Willie came out. Steamboat Willie? Mickey Mouse's first picture show. Oh, yeah. How do you not know that? I just, I must have forgotten. Uh -huh. Forgetting Mickey Mouse's birthday. Disappointed. I know. Yeah. I am, too. I love Disney movies. Me, too. What's your favorite? Cars 2. By far, the best movie ever. Mine is Finding Nemo. Ooh, I hear that's coming out in 3D, or came out last week. It did. I believe Johnny and Jacob will be telling us more about that later. So what do you think of our topic, uh, safe driving? I think safe driving is a really important topic for us this week, I think. It is. Um, actually, this week is Watch Out for Wildness Awareness Week. Really? Yes, it is a week that helps us, you know, it helps remind us that there's always animals out there, you know, deer, squirrels, possums, mm -hmm. that, and they're, they're one of the biggest hazards out on the road. You know, and I know um, in 2010, Highway Patrol reported, I think it was more than 1,800 um, accidents involving animals. Oh, wow. Causing over $1 billion in property damage. That's a lot just from animals. You don't really think about that when you're driving. I know, but they're out there, and they're definitely a hazard. Definitely. That's scary. Actually, when I was driving home from the game last week, I got pretty close to hitting a deer. It was... Oh, no. I was like, no, Bambi. I, I It flashed before my eyes. All the, you know, scenes of Bambi. It was scary. <laughs> Not going to lie. Did you go to your homecoming game? Yeah, I, of course I went. It's homecoming game. You have to go. True. How did you do? Our team, we played Delta, and both JV and Varsity won 38 to 0. They both had the same score? Mm-hmm. It's pretty shocking. That's lucky or something. I know. It was kind of weird. Did you play the lottery or? Uh, I should have that no. week. Yeah, I mean, it was lucky same week. score. That's, <laughs> we beat our opponents as well. I think it was 27 to 20, hmm. something like that. And the other one, we beat them by even more. That's awesome. Thank yeah, you. it was a good game. Our band did really well, too. I was That's good. proud of them. So yeah, did our band. Yeah? Well, mm -hmm. well, what's your favorite song that the band does? Um, well, our band this week, um, their halftime show was Shout. You know the song? Shout. Yeah. Shout. Let it all out. That one? Mm -hmm, that song. Love that song. It's really entertaining. It is. I want to learn how to sing that one day. You should. I bet you, you can come on here and sing for us. Except I can't sing. Like, at all. Well, it, it, even my shower doesn't like me. Aww. It laughs in my face. <laughs> Makes me sad. <laughs> Well, maybe you can come sing here, and then the shower doesn't need to laugh anymore, and we can laugh. Oh, so you'll laugh at me? Of course. What are friends for? Laughing with me, not at me? Uh, that never really works out. We can have our own, like, Amador County Idol over here. Like, you know, I'm thinking that Hattie can win that one. She's got a pretty good singing voice. Hmm. Though Amish is up there. I mean, Danny. Danny's up there. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll have to do that as a segment sometime one of these we will. weeks. I think Danny actually knows all of the words to Johnny Be Good. 
That is pretty impressive. <laughs> it is. I mean, you know, you gotta love Chuck Berry. Of course. Chuck Berry, <laughs> great guitarist. Not as amazing as like Taylor Swift and her music. I mean, nothing beats Taylor Swift. Chuck Berry, Johnny Cash, you, you Fra Frank Sinatra is way better than Taylor Swift. It's the best you can come up with. Uh, well, whatever you think. I mean, I'm entitled to my opinion. You can, I guess, go somewhere else and enjoy yours, but Taylor Swift, definitely. Who taught you about music? <laughs> wow. That hurts. That really hurts, Zach. Sorry. Sorry. I, I feel bad now. You should. You really should. I'm trying to apologize here. <laughs> Not let me. See how it is. Don't apologize. Why don't you let me? Come on. Why won't you let me apologize? Okay. I, I accept your apology, Zach. Good. Thank you for accepting my apology. Because it was heartfelt. You I'm have sure no it idea. Was. I'm sure it was. Well... So what is your, okay, I, I've got to ask now, what is your favorite Taylor Swift song? Oh, I am a diehard Taylor Swift fan. You, I cannot answer that question. That you you don't have a favorite? Her. She has more than 125 songs. I know at least 97 of them by heart. I can sing them back and forth in my shower. Sing one. Well, we're running short on time. We don't have time for that okay. right now. Okay, later on, you are singing a Taylor Swift song. Maybe, if. I think Danny okay. will help you. We have a break coming up soon, so. So we're gonna. Alright, reset for this. You're watching Amador County's local t TSPN. We're back. I'm Emily. And I'm Alexis, and we're here to talk to you about safe and distracted driving. So, did you know that? Being sleepy while driving is more dangerous than drinking and driving. Hmm. Mm. I didn't know that. That's yeah. pretty interesting. Um, wear your seatbelt at all times. Click it or get a ticket. It is definitely one of the main laws they enforce is here, not wearing your seatbelt while you're driving. Yes. Um, drinking and driving. Every 22 minutes, someone dies in alcohol-related motor vehicle accident. It's That's... That's just sad. It's less than half an hour that somebody's dying. 60% of teen deaths in a car accident are alcohol related. So, teen deaths. Hmm. Did you know, although over 90% of teen drivers say they don't drink and drive, 9 out of 10 say they have seen passengers distracting the driver or drivers using cell phones. Hmm. Another thing, 5,500 people in the United States were killed and almost half a million injured by distracted driving. Distracted driving is the number one killer of American teens. Alcohol-related accidents among teens have dropped because distracted driving is on the rise. 18% hmm. of these fatal crashes we're talking about involve reports of distracted driving. Distractions can be like texting, calling, music, makeup, eating, passengers, anything really. Anything that's taking your focus off the road is a distraction to you and the other people around you. Mm -hmm. Brain power used while driving, while driving decreases about 40% when a driver listens to music or is having a conversation. Hmm. So, some surprising facts that we learned were, in 2007, motor vehicle accidents were the leading cause of death among 13 and 19 year olds, male and female in the United States. Hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> um, 16 year olds have higher crash rates than other drivers of any other age. So that's probably because they're new drivers. They don't really, they're more. They're less experienced, so mm -hmm. they're not aware of as much stuff as experienced drivers are. 60% of teen passenger deaths in 2009 occurred in vehicles driven by another teen. Hmm. 
Um, Lexi, how do you feel about cell phones and driving? I, I personally would not talk to myself from while driving because with me, like, it's too much to do at once. Like, driving takes mm -hmm. a lot of my focus, so having a conversation with somebody else would not be good for me or my, the other people on the road. Same with me. Like, um, if I'm driving with my parents and they get a phone call, I, I hate when they try to answer their phone themselves. I always grab it out of their hands and answer it for them because I just won't ride in the car with someone who's talking on their cell phone. Agreed. So... 80% of teen motor vehicle crash deaths in 2009 were passenger vehicle occupants, which means 80% of the teens who died were the passenger, not the driver. 55% of motor vehicle crashes deaths among teenagers in 2009 occurred on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So during the weekends when kids aren't in school or don't really have responsibilities to go to, they're out on the road. So it's higher for them to get in an accident than on weekdays when we have other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So Emily, what has your mom told you about your rules in drinking and driving? Drinking and driving, like, I don't drink personally. I don't, like, it's definitely immoral for me. But my parents say that um, if I am out with friends or I go to a party and I do make the mistake of drinking, they will be much nicer, more, much more tolerant about it if I call them to pick me up instead of me trying to drive home or lying about it and staying at a friend's house or something like that. They would much rather know and drive me home themselves than me try and figure it out. Yes. Um, when I see other teens talking on the phone while driving, I kind of just want to jump through the window and take the phone away from them because they're not just distracting themselves, they're distracting other people too. Mm -hmm. um, I know that if my friends were drinking or driving or had an issue and they needed somebody to pick them up, I would totally be there to go and get them. Mm -hmm. like even at three in the morning, I'd answer my phone call and go get a friend if they really, if they were in that state, I'd go pick them up. Yes. Um, so uh, we know that we overloaded you with a lot of facts, but <laughs> um, they're here to uh, help the teens stay safe and aware of the parents of what's going on in California and in Amateur County as general. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else you would like to add today? I think that's it. I think, well, one more thing. Um, we're running out of time so we're going to send it over to Zach and Hattie and our guest today. So please give them a very Your attention. warm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to Zach. I'm Hattie Hutchings. I'm Zach. And this is our lovely guest. Ann Lentz. I'm Ann Lentz, yes. <laughs> we will be talking about um, see, safe teen driving because that is our topic. Um, but first, what do you do outside of State Farm? Well, I have my State Farm Insurance Agency, and um, years ago I got involved with what's called Amador Teen Driver, and we formed that group, um, and we go to different schools. We go to the two schools in Amador County, the high schools, mm -hmm. and we bring in parents and teenagers to a program we do twice a year. Okay. How did you get involved with that? Well, you know, in 2005, um, Amador County lost five kids in um, fatalities, and all five of those kids were involved in auto accidents. Two of them were on the on their way to the funeral of one of them. It was a very very sad year for Amador County, and we wanted a group of us got together and we wanted to make make parents aware, make kids aware that these roads are not safe. Not one of those kids was drinking and driving. Not one of them was using drugs. They were just driving a little bit too fast on our roads and they were all killed and one and one kid ended up paralyzed so we really wanted to start something that made a difference and so far I mean knock on wood we haven't lost a high school student since then That's um, and it that is really a good a good thing I don't know how much it's due to our group but we've we've hopefully brought a lot of awareness why so, is it important to drive safely 
Well, come on. <laughs> hey, some people I know. might not know. Some people don't know, and you would think that um, seeing people on the road that they truly don't have a clue. <laughs> I, I think, you know, when you think about if you ever did hurt somebody or if you ever, you know, let's pretend your friend was in the car with you and they now are paralyzed for life, how do you live with them yourself? Or you, you kill somebody by accident. You think about that, just texting for just a few seconds, looking down, and there's a bicyclist. People do that. They kill people. And I'm not sure how you live with yourself after that. Now I'm glad to say I can't text anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I would not be able to live with myself if that happened to me. Yeah. It would be sad. It would be be pretty awful. And there's a lot of people that do have to live with themselves, and some of them turn their lives around, and and they, they dedicate themselves to these kinds of causes. I know one of the people in our group um, is the mom of one of those kids that was killed, and wow. she's dedicated herself. Tina Wurzberger has has really just dedicated herself to helping the community, and she puts on the programs with me um, for the Amador Teen Driver, okay. and they're amazing programs. We have one coming up on October 23rd at Argonaut High School. I went to that last year. Did you? I yeah. Think I did too. I got extra credit year. for it. Yeah, a lot of the stu- a lot of the teachers give extra credit. Yeah. Right. It's another incentive. That's right. I didn't only go for the extra credit. I went because it's a learning experience for me. Right. What kind of things do you learn at um, M&R Teen Safe Driver Night? Well, we we have a lot of different speakers. We have Bob, Dr. Barb Hartman, who is the public health officer, and he talks about the teenage brain and how different it is from the adult brain. And actually, it's fascinating. I can, I've listened to his talk six times, and I, I, it's really amazing. We also have a Highway Patrol officer, Craig Harmon, who comes on, and he talks about what Highway Patrol officers are looking for with teen drivers. <laughs> it's shocking, some of the things he comes up with. Uh, and, and they do profile you, let me just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not all bad. I know. But Only Zach is. Yeah. And then we also have um, Judge Steve Hermanson, and he, um, my son had seen that program probably five or six times, and he said, that guy scared the daylights out of him. <laughs> he talked about DUIs and murder. And, oh, God. You know, you think you, think you want to drive carefully? Yeah. You kill somebody that. in that situation. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's, not just, it's not just bad for that person, not just bad for the rest of your life, but... Bad for everybody. Bad for, oh my gosh, yes. So, Anne, what are some ways we can be safer while we're driving? Like, what are some do's and what are some don'ts? Well, number one, you know, obviously obey the rules of the road. Number two, I always tell kids that a weird phenomenon that your parents might not even realize is we teach you to sleep sitting up in a car. And from the moment you're born, I mean, we used to take our kids on rides around the neighborhood to put them to sleep. Mm -hmm. But when I was driving in a car as a kid, we were laying down the back seat with a dog. You know, there was no seat belts. And maybe I'm dating myself. (laughs) But, But you guys, it's easy to fall asleep. So when you're driving at night, you gotta think about that. You also have to think about alcohol and all kinds of things as far as that like distracted narcotics. driving you guys have been talking about that mm-hmm. you know you can't do the the distracted driving drinking and driving is zero tolerance so you spend the night at your friend's house and you drive home in the morning i've had kids get duis the next morning wow because you're still you have alcohol in your system be very uh, careful with that yeah it's you don't realize how much alcohol can stay in your system if you have enough to drink. I didn't know that. Yeah, That's so you have to be careful. Scary. It Very. is. I can scare the pants off you. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm afraid. I know. Nobody you ever wants be. to drive after they've talked to me. Well, I, I know I, I attended uh, the Amador Teen Safe Driver Night a couple years ago, and I'm still driving. So. Well, good. I'm gra- glad to hear it. Most of most people are, and it it's a good program. And October 23rd, we're going to have another one. Everybody okay. is invited. We always want kids to come with the parents. Well, it looks like we're running short on time, so we will be going to our ad break in a few seconds. Thank you for yeah, coming on the show. Much. It thank was very lovely me. to have you. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. County's local television network, TSPN. I'm propane. I'm moving in. I'm more efficient than you. Hi, I'm Zach Kirkham. I'm Hattie Hutchings, and these are our three guests. Well, she's not really a guest. She's part of the show. She's family. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Alexis. I'm DJ. And I'm Carlin. 
So, okay, I'm curious. You all have matching shirts. Where, what where, is, where did what you is get up them? with that? It's so we went to a conference on distractive driving in at Disneyland mm -hmm. at the Paradise Hotel, and our shirts say, uh, "Who holds the key to your future?" And it means. Um. <laughs> <laughs> It means Sorry. that we and, like, others hold the key to our future. Like, we control what happens. Okay. So what kind of stuff did you guys learn there? Okay. We really learned how to break down with groups. We learned different things about distracted driving. Um, just a lot of different things to learn to break down groups, different okay. things of how not to drive horribly. Why did you choose to go? Well, we chose to go... Because distracted driving is a huge problem in not just California, Amador County. It's everywhere. So it doesn't matter where it is. It's always around and it's always going to be around. Okay. So what do you guys mean by um, distracted driving? Like what are some things that are distracting to teens? Um, some things that are distracting to teens are like talking to your passenger, texting while driving, talking on the phone, um, eating and doing your makeup. Maybe even doing some homework while driving. <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> well, Zach just said Zach. that. Yes. Um, that is not good. Right. Shame on you. Well, now I know. <laughs> Radio. Just anything that takes your focus off the road is a distraction. Okay. So you guys definitely learned all that. Did you guys have fun? Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We learned a lot of things that... Personally, I never thought I would be able to learn. Okay. What are some of your favorite parts about going to this conference? One of my favorite parts was the Hope Dealer, also known as Jeremy Bates. He was a, um, a speaker there, okay. and he was teaching us like never to give up on anything. Okay. And, it's, and ho he used hope as an acronym for help other people every day. That's a, gr that's a great acronym. It is. That's, my that's truly great. And how about, how about you, Alexis? What was your favorite part? Um, I really liked one of the per people who helped put it together. His name was Eric. He really helped us, like, how to be better leaders, mm -hmm. how to uh, entertain your chapter, and he was just really inspiring to me. Carlin, what about you? What was your favorite part? Um, one of my favorite parts definitely was we were in our own little workshops. Each of us broke up, and we learned um, how to break down a group, how to have icebreakers to make people more comfortable with everybody else that they're working with, just mm -hmm. to be a lot more comfortable with their group and with their chapter. Yeah, to be comfortable around each other. So, What do you think the biggest challenge you guys had while at the conference? It was... For me, it was definitely getting to know people mm -hmm. and um, learning their names because I'm not very good with names. <laughs> names are tough. Earlier, I called her Emily. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> there is an Emily here. Yeah, uh, yeah there is. But. You're close. Zach's the same way, so it's okay. I am. <laughs> took like two weeks, no matter. How about you? What was, your, what was the most challenging thing you did? Um, probably just the same as DJ. Learning new, uh, just how to interact with people that I've never known before how to really um, begin talking with them and how to like trust them better. Because like, when you're in a group, you don't know anybody, mm -hmm. but you instantly have that bond, like that stranger trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, act and there's um, actually a juvenile youth or juvenile justice youth advisory board coming up. It's, um, I know they did it last year at Argonaut. Um, that's coming up on Tuesday, September 25th, which is that, that's coming up. I know it is. That's next week, um, next that's week Zach. I know my days. Um, you didn't. Okay. Well, that's going to be at Independence and Community School High Schools, um, and it's going to be a real court hearing. You know, so you've got the real sentencing. You've got everything you, you're going to learn. So once again, that's on Tuesday, September 25th, and I believe we are going to break. No. No, no, we're going to no. cooking. We're going to our wonderful cooking segment. And <laughs> well, I'm Emily. And I am Danny. And welcome to the oatmeal hour, or five minutes, I suppose, but... 
We're going to be talking soup. about oatmeal and how healthy it is and mm-hmm. convenient for mornings and we're going to school and stuff like that. Oatmeal is such an amazing dish. Not only is it amazingly delicious and healthy for you, it is really easy to prepare, especially compared to other healthy dishes. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is mix in like half a cup of oatmeal, one cup of water, pop it in the microwave for maybe three minutes, and boom, it's done and ready to eat. Yeah, and it's really good. You can top it with whatever you want. Like, for, for example, we have some brown sugar and blueberries, almonds, peanut butter, bananas. Mm-hmm. And there are so many more things, too, that you can add to your oatmeal. It's just amazing, all the different sort of things that you can do with it. Uh, we already prepared some oatmeal a bit earlier for the whole entire cast of tonight's show. We're going to have them tell us what they think about it um, once they come on in a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> there are many different kinds of oatmeal, but the most common would have to be rolled, s- steel cut, and Scottish. Uh, Scottish is very creamy and smooth, while rolled is uh, flat and also fairly smooth. It uh, also cooks fairly quickly, Compa- and then there are steel cut oats, which are much uh, more grainy. It's sort of like smaller little kernels of corn. They take a very long time to cook. And steel cut oats, you can you usually cook them in a saucepan in boiling water for about half an hour, compared to instant oats or just regular rolled oats, which can be done in one to three minutes. Even though um, steel cut oats take a lot longer, they're definitely the healthier choice. So that is why people tend to spend the time making the steel cut oats as opposed to the well, other kinds. Well, uh, there is no, ne- as far as I can tell, uh, there's no real difference nutritionally between steel cut, rolled, Scottish, whatever. It's more as uh, the texture and feel of it, and maybe also taste. I have uh, some information here, and. Original old-fashioned oats and steel-cut oats provide 5 grams of protein per 40 grams of serving. So it's like half a cup of dry um, old-fashioned oats or a quarter cup of dry steel-cut oats. So like half as much of the steel-cut oats are the same amount of, I guess, Mm. protein. Well, scratch that then. I guess they are healthier. (laughs) Um, Old fashioned is just another name for rolled. Right. Um, but you can also add um, like peanut butter that will add mm-hmm. to the protein of any kind of mm. um, oatmeal. Though peanut butter isn't necessarily the healthiest food product, it, is, it definitely provides protein and it's very delicious. Mm-hmm. I love peanut butter. <laughs> oh, same here. I eat peanut butter sandwiches every single day. Same with me. That's my lunch every day. Yeah. That's oh, our little yeah. uh, our handshake. Our handshake. This cool guy right here. Um, but what about instant oatmeal? Like instant oatmeal, uh, if I recall correctly, it's basically just uh, rolled oatmeal that has been uh, pre-cooked and then dried so it can be cooked again a lot faster. I'm not sure about the nutritional difference, but I'm sure it isn't very significant. Well, um, from my understanding, my information, uh, instant oatmeal is a little bit more, um, since it is instant, it is prepared, so it takes less time to cook, and so it also takes less time to digest, so it keeps you, it doesn't keep you as full as long as traditional slow-cooked oatmeal does. Um, And it also has added sugar, stuff like that. Mm. So it's not as healthy, but it's definitely easy to make and still pretty healthy. I guess it also depends. Like some brands may add extra stuff to instant oats, mm-hmm. make them taste better. All right, and now we're going to have everybody come on and enjoy some of our delicious and healthy and nutritious oatmeal. All right, just go ahead and start grabbing whatever you want, putting on toppings. We got some brown sugar over here. Would you open that, please? And we got some plastic spoons over there in a little cup. Looks, I am the chef. I need a little bit of room. In the bathroom. All right, come on, everybody. Scoot on in. Pass those spoons around. Pass the spoons. 
Dr. Pepper. 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 Dr.